What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and I just got finished watching the Worldwide Developer Conference and here are the top 5 things I took away from it. Let's start off with the improvements to messaging. There were a few updates introduced here but my favorite is Apple's decision to open up the SDK and allow for the third party apps to be built into the messaging experience. So for example, you could, without ever leaving messages, use Square Cash to transfer money to another user. The second notable change to messaging are the new ways of interaction, like being able to send different sized emojis and dynamic bubbles that grow and shrink to allow different ways of expression. Messages and pictures also now have a way of being sent with an element of surprise. Users will have to swipe or tap particles away to reveal a received picture or message. And finally, the last cool thing I saw with messaging was the full screen effects. One of the examples shown were of birthday balloons flowing in the background of the conversation when the keyboard happy birthday was sent. I just think this makes the messaging experience a lot more animated and fun. The second notable change coming to iOS 10 are the improvements introduced to Siri. There are a few changes here with the most notable being the third party integration. With iOS 10, we should see things like being able to call an Uber, start workouts, sending payments to friends, and much more. Apple's keyboard also is getting a major overhaul with the help of Siri. It will now be able to use Siri to offer suggestions like calendar availability and intelligent scheduling based on what you're typing. Third on my list is the reworked Maps application. It's getting an all new design that makes it easier to access the controls. The app is also more proactive and has better search filters. Something they're also doing is adding quick controls to be able to see nearby gas or food stops that go along your route. And sticking with this theme of opening up SDKs, Maps has also received this treatment. Third-party apps like Uber and OpenTable can build functionality straight in, like ordering a ride or booking a table. They've also improved the infrastructure of the app with live traffic conditions finally being available. All of these changes might just bring me back from Google Maps, but the jury's still out on that one. The fourth change is the addition of the new Home app. This makes it a lot easier to interact with your HomeKit-supported accessories. So controlling your lights, thermostat, locking your doors are easily accessible through one app instead of a bunch of third-party ones. The home app also includes automation with geofencing and scheduled tasks. So for example, having your garage door open and the jacuzzi start up when you pull up to your house. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that sounds freaking cool. And finally, my last favorite change to iOS is probably what gets used the least nowadays in smartphones, the phone application. Now carriers can include information on your screen when you receive a call which is a big plus for me because I get a ridiculous amount of spam calls so this should cut out a good amount of those. They've also included the ability of voicemail transcripts which is basically text from what was said in the voicemail. This is definitely a cool feature and I can see this saving me a lot of time instead of listening to the entire message I can basically skim through the entire text. But overall I was somewhat disappointed with the whole conference, not because of what Apple presented but the lack of any new hardware. I was really looking forward to some of the new MacBooks but I guess I'll have to wait until their next event. As far as iOS goes, they brought some cool things to the table and definitely improved on some things that needed it. But overall, nothing was mind blowing. But that pretty much wraps up this video, if you guys enjoyed it make sure to leave a like and I will see you in the next video.